Chapter 461, Lu Xiaoyu the Grade Skipper To Luo Cheng Foreign Language School, Lu Xu's return was a great uncertainty. Almost all Daoyuan class students were guessing where Lu Xu had gone because by right he should have come back together with Chao Qingxi. Usually, they could have clarified it with Lu Xu's company, who happened to be Chao Qingxi this time. People rarely interacted with Lu Xu as they did not have a strong enough heart. However, when they talked to Chao Qingxi, the calmness in her eyes had the power to silence all words at once. The speculation that Lu Xu had gone to the remains with Li Xiao was not backed by any evidence. But the more uncertain it seemed, the more curious the students were about the topic. Strangely, when Lu Xu had returned, no one showed any interest anymore. Things had gone back to usual, no conversation, no questions, no harm. As a result, other classes were still unaware of Lu Xu's return even after two lessons. The only thing they knew was that someone from the Daoyuan class had exploded a commoner student's basketball before afternoon lessons, yet, they did not know who had done it. In most Chinese high schools, the teaching of the entire high school curriculum would have been finished by grade 11, while the final year was purely for revision. Suddenly Lu Xu asked Jiang Shui, what's the acceptance rate of Luoshan Cultivation College? In fact, the cutoff point for the high school leaving examination had always been a matter of acceptance rate. It would be lower if they decided to take in more students, and the reverse was true as well. Jiang Shui shook his head. Despite its large campus size, the number of students per batch can be as few as around 1,000. Now, the admission of the seven schools is open to all students from the Heavenly Network and Daoyuan class. The number of accepted students from Daoyuan class has decreased a bit since their voluntary withdrawal last time. But, given the increasing concentration of spirit qi nowadays, it is getting easier to become a practitioner. Now, maybe only people of class G and 1. G is the sixth of China's ten heavenly stems, and above have the aptitude for cultivation, but in the future perhaps those of class Gang, too. Gang is the seventh of the heavenly stems, can do it too. Class Gang? Lu Xu had only heard of the ten heavenly stems comprising Jia, Yi, Bing, Ding, Wu, Ji, Gang and Xian in sequence. So class Gang should be even lower than class G. Perhaps the entry point for suitable cultivation aptitude had lowered due to the rapid growth of spirit qi. If that was the case, his aptitude would no longer be the weakest. Lu Xu was happy. In general, the acceptance rate was not that low. In Yuzhou for instance, getting into cultivation colleges should be easier than securing a place in a second-tier university. In fact, Yujo's results for high school leaving examinations had always been a disaster. It would have been worth celebrating if one-tenth of ordinary high school students were enrolled by first- and second-tier universities. It was not because of their poor grades, but the insanely high cutoff point. At this moment, their form teacher Shi Qingyan suddenly appeared at the door of the classroom. Lu Xu, come to my office to settle the relevant procedures regarding your leave. Lu Xu did as told. But no sooner had he entered the staff room than he saw Lu Xiaoyu behind Li Xiao. Lu Xu was stunned. What was going on? Li Xiao and Lu Xiaoyu did not notice Lu Xu at all in the crowded room. Li Xiao was sitting down in a casual manner. I know that this matter is unprecedented, but do we really have to follow prior experience in the education of students? Didn't that someone say? What did he say? At his side, the deputy principal, the level head and a group of teachers were already irritated inside. Who knew what that someone had said? Lu Xiaoyu added, Confucius said in education there should not be class distinction. Everyone is equal as an education receiver and everyone has the right to be educated. Students should not be viewed differently for their social backgrounds. The deputy principal could not help but urged, but Confucius definitely didn't mean that a grade 8 student can be promoted directly to grade 12. Li Xiao was unhappy. Are you Confucius? How do you know that's what he meant? Call him over and let me talk to him. Deputy principal? 
Deep down, the deputy principal wanted to reply that he could send Li Xiao to Confucius for a good chat. But in current times, it would be more likely that he himself would be sent over by Li Xiao. No way. The deputy principal shook his head again. I can't open this back door for you. Li Xiao's patience was wearing off. Those who fly first. How do you call that, Xiaoyu? Those who fly first are stupid birds. Those who come later are smarter, Lu Xiaoyu replied calmly. From Lu Pingxing's distress, plus 666. From Wang Dingwa's distress, plus 666. Where did you get all that distorted logic from, girl? Also, are you really serious, Principal Li? How can you believe her argument? Neither side was willing to back down. In the past, the deputy principal's power had always been eclipsed by Li Xiao. It took him great effort to improve and stabilize commoner students' grades in the past half a year. With Li Xiao constantly in a status of MIA, 3. Missing in action, he felt as if he had gone back to the golden times of being a principal himself. But trouble returned together with Li Xiao. How could a grade 8 student be possibly allowed to jump to grade 12? However, though reluctant, he did not dare to anger Li Xiao either. Lu Xiaoyu proposed in composure, you can test my abilities with an exam paper. I will go to grade 12 if I score 80% or above. I have to attend the high school leaving examinations this year. The teachers exchanged a startled look. Why are you in such a hurry? Speaking of which, Lu Xiaoyu's proposal was ridiculous. How could a grade 8 student score higher than 80% for a high school paper? She must be kidding. Indeed, there had been news of 11-year-olds going to university. But hardly anyone would believe it if it happened around themselves. However, let alone 80%, they would open the door for Lu Xiaoyu if she could even pass the exam. Then, strong publicity would follow saying that they had produced a genius. The deputy principal asked, how old are you? Lu Xiaoyu was even calmer than most students. Turning 11. Everyone drew another startled breath. Usually grade 8 students were aged between 13 and 15. Yet it seemed that Lu Xiaoyu had already been a grade skipper once. Okay. We will accept you if you achieve 80% of the total score. If you can't, we will pretend that nothing has happened. All right, the deputy principal said. We will know it if you are bragging. By then, even Principal Li would not be able to help you. Deal, Lu Xiaoyu replied with great confidence. Chapter 462, A National Hero No one knew why Lu Xiaoyu insisted on attending the high school leaving examinations this year, including Li Yixiao. Li Xiao had decided to help Lu Xiaoyu not because of his disposition for the girl and Li Xianyi's rapport with her, but also for her generosity in giving him most of the money she robbed from the bunch of Earth-type metahumans in Pattaya. Lu Xu had once said that help should always come at a price. If not, why should they help you? For your friendship? Even if the other person was willing, you should always think about how to repay their kindness. Thus, Lu Xiaoyu made a hard decision to give all her spoils to Li Xiao except for the sum enough to treat Lu Xu to a meal. You could imagine just how happy Li Xiao was. Meanwhile, the 30-year-old man did not feel ashamed at all for accepting a 11-year-old girl's money. Standing behind the crowd, mixed feelings crept into Lu Xu's heart. A few months ago, he was curious about Lu Xiaoyu's sudden diligence in studies as she would bury herself in books for a while every day after school, including during holidays. He thought Lu Xiaoyu was finally mature enough to know the importance of study. But only at that moment did he realize that the fundamental reason was something he once said, that he would probably stay in the university accommodation in the future and come home once a week. However, it was really beyond his expectations that Lu Xiaoyu would actually start self-learning the high school syllabus for that sentence alone. Now, she even had the confidence that she would score higher than 80%. In fact, Lu Xiaoyu had also been putting an effort in silence for their lives together. 
she had not mentioned a single word about it even until he went to school that day. In Lu Xiaoyu's worldview, she would never cling to Lu Xu like a parasite. Instead, she would be 120% committed for a better life for the both of them. Lu Xu sneaked out in secret. He would pretend to know nothing since Lu Xiaoyu did not want him informed as of yet. In the meantime, the deputy principal had ordered the paper of the next month's assessment to be delivered to Lu Xiaoyu. Since no one had done the questions yet, the possibility of cheating was non-existent. As a matter of fact, he hoped Lu Xiaoyu would fail to achieve her goal so that Li Xiao would lose his face. His demotion from principal to deputy principal had made him a laughingstock in the Luocheng education realm. Humanities or sciences, a teacher asked. Humanities, replied Lu Xiaoyu. That was her strength. Maths and English were a piece of cake for her, and Chinese was pretty manageable too. In the staff room, teachers gathered together to watch Lu Xiaoyu doing questions for the entire afternoon without any breaks. At 7 p.m., they could not bear it any longer. Maybe you can come back tomorrow to finish the rest? It was extremely mentally tiring to complete Chinese, maths, English and combined humanities papers in one day. But Lu Xiaoyu carried on. When the last paper was given to her, two black shadows started flipping through books crazily in a shabby house along Xingxi Road. She might not even know where to find the answers had she not studied so hard earlier. Nonetheless, with enough prior practice and two spirits checking answers against textbooks, it would be hard for Lu Xiaoyu to even fail the test. Meanwhile, Little Fury was copying scriptures with a pencil between its arms. Suddenly, two spirits rose up and began flipping through books with one of them giggling like a madman, which made Little Fury's flesh creep. What was happening? It could not focus on its work like that. But the Demon King would check its progress at night. From Little Fury's distress, plus 299. At that moment, the door was unlocked and Lu Xu came in. Instead of waiting for Lu Xiaoyu, he went back in advance just as usual. He would fulfill her wishes since Lu Xiaoyu wanted to give him a surprise. Actually, he did not attend Dao Yuan classes at all as he thought he had the right to exercise his major privileges. However, he was shocked the second he opened the door. Anthony was flipping through books with a silly grin while Little Fury, trembling in the corner, looked at him beseeching for help. At this moment, Anthony and Johnson also stopped their movement at the sight of Lu Xu, like kids who had been caught doing something naughty. Anthony's deep sea white sand suddenly arranged into a line. Why are you back so early? I'm not in an exam. Lu Xu. A very poor lie indeed. As Lu Xiaoyu wrote on, teachers were marking her scripts at the same time. It was fast to mark only one script and her results for maths and English were already out before she finished her combined humanities paper. She scored 134 for maths and 125 for English, both over the 80% line. With a total of 150, 80% meant 120 marks. But the Chinese teacher was both confused and shocked. Confident of her academic capabilities based on her previous two subjects, the teachers were assured that she would have no issue getting into a university even if she was sent to the official exams now. But, what happened to her Chinese? Or was there something wrong with the marker herself? In fact, the result was reasonably good, 88 marks. But the teacher suddenly started to doubt her own mastery of Chinese grammar. Although some idioms and sentence structures were not supposed to be used that way, they all seemed rather smooth and normal in Lu Xiaoyu's script. Yet, the main problem was her essay. The question asked for a national hero, but the teacher almost experienced a heart attack upon reading Lu Xiaoyu's title. My daily experience with the national hero Xu. Who the hell was Xu? Was he really a national hero? Do you have a misunderstanding about Chinese even though you are good at other subjects? Honestly speaking, Lu Xiaoyu had never put in much effort in Chinese. Although she had read and recited the textbooks dutifully, essay skills could never be honed purely through drilling. 
Thus, in the end, her essay was only awarded the sympathy mark, six marks. From Lu Hong's distress, plus 666. Meanwhile, Lu Xiaoyu was in a flurry. Was Lu Xu not supposed to be attending Dao Yuan class lessons then? Why was he home? Crap. She had wanted to give him a surprise. Chapter 463, They're All Tricks. Just when all the teachers were watching Lu Xiaoyu complete questions, her face suddenly changed, as though something bad had happened. Li Ixiao was immediately concerned. Are you okay, Xiaoyu? Feeling unwell? Don't force yourself. You can continue with the rest tomorrow. If anything happens to you, the old man. Ignoring him completely, Lu Xiaoyu hastened. Meanwhile, right under Lu Xu's nose, Anthony and Johnson sank into the floor with textbooks. Lu Xu was dumbstruck for a long moment. What kind of deception was that? When Lu Xiaoyu was finally done with her test, she threw away her pen and ran off at once, leaving other teachers staring one another in shock in the staff room. The markers of the combined humanities paper came over to mark the script. Soon, the politics teacher realized something strange. All her answers are exactly the same as the textbooks. In fact, all long questions of the politics paper were argument-based and most of their answers could be found on books. But it was almost impossible to memorize word for word. The deputy principal's brows were closely knitted together. Could it be Luo Chung Foreign Language School has really produced a beast-level genius? He said after a pause, mark the script and see how much she got. Lu Xiaoyu scored 271 marks out of 300. The deputy principal pondered for a long while before speaking, principally, while admittedly this girl is a prodigy, her Chinese is really too weak. You see, she's just one mark away from 80% of her total mark. Before he finished his sentence, Li Yixiao's tiger sign was already flickering on his back. I give you one more chance to reorganize your language. Think carefully. The deputy principal was close to flipping his table. Bloody hell. You should have shown it earlier. You should have just told us that you would beat us up if we did not let her pass and we would have spared her from the test. The deputy principal squeezed out an amicable smile. The girl is a true prodigy. So, we must make an exception and enroll her. I agree to promote her by three grades. Li Ixiao nodded his head. Finally, he could be at ease with accepting Lu Xiaoyu's money. Honestly, he was very satisfied with his performance today. Back then, his master had instructed him that violence should not be used as the first solution to problems. Did he not do as he was told today? Moreover, he did not use force in the end and was even generous enough to give the other person one more chance. Li Yixiao felt that his temper had become so much better nowadays. How happy his master would be if he were still alive. Li Yixiao thought with a tad sadness across his mind. Many years ago, he fell in love with a beautiful widow selling fried chive cakes outside their door. Their feelings were mutual but his master simply objected to their relationship. Despite Li Yixiao's urge to rebel using violence, he did not do so out of the respect for his master. When he was chased out, his master said, Ixiao, outside this door is another world. Listen, look and learn from this world. Come back seven years later. Actually it is fine if you no longer return. Li Yixiao was stunned by his master's generosity with his freedom. However, his master had already gone when he went back seven years later. He learned later that likely Xianyi, his master's foundation, had long since been destroyed. As a result, he passed away just three days after Li Yixiao left. In the end, Li Yixiao cried his heart out for three days and three nights in front of his master's tomb. Now thinking back, he thought he should have given his master another chance to reorganize his language instead of being so childish himself. Lu Xiaoyu sneaked indoors furtively, only to see Lu Xu's bedroom door shut tight. Curious about what he was doing, she leaned her ears on the door and heard faint singing from inside. 
Twinkle twinkle little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. When the blazing sun is gone, there is nothing that shines upon. He could not see which way to go if you did not twinkle so. Lu Xiaoyu curled her lips. He's singing, twinkle twinkle little star, again. She knocked on his door. Lu Xu. The singing stopped abruptly. Lu Xu coughed before replying, Is that you, Xiaoyu? Pulling the door open, he asked curiously, Why were you controlling Johnson and Anthony just now? Tell me, are you cheating during exams? Why do you need to cheat for junior high exams? I got one question that I didn't know how to do, since I've been missing lessons for so long, Lu Xiaoyu explained as she stared into Lu Xu's eyes to see whether he was acting. Oh, I see. Cheating is no big deal anyway. Books are always good. But try not to do so next time. Yes, I know. Did you see Li Xiao today? Wasn't he with you? Lu Xu paused. Humph. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 199. <laughs> I know you want to give me a surprise. Lu Xu tried to smooth things over. Actually, I'm already very surprised. I didn't expect our Xiaoyu to learn the entire high school syllabus. I'm so proud of you. Humph. Lu Xiaoyu was still unhappy. Her plan to surprise him had failed. Maybe you don't know, I've already seen people discussing about you in a group chat. They all say you are a prodigy, since you are about to become an 11-year-old grade 12 student. Things like this can't be kept a secret. Lu Xu grinned. After shooting him a cold glance, Lu Xiaoyu went to watch TV. How careless. They should have kicked you out of the group. Lu Xu was displeased too. Why so? I'm only giving them precious advice on life based on my own experience. Why should they kick me out? I want tomato noodles with eggs. I thought you know how to cook. Cook one bowl for me too. I haven't had dinner. Lu Xu, you've changed. Lu Xiaoyu distress level, plus 399. Lu Xu was frustrated again. I didn't. Listen to me. I'm going to skip my breakfast and beat Li Xiao up tomorrow. Lu Xiaoyu's face was straight. Stunned, Lu Xu asked, why do you want to beat him up? As I said, you've changed. You don't even bother to ask why I'm skipping my breakfast. Lu Xu? Why are there so many tricks? At this moment, Little Fury gingerly passed up the scriptures it copied. At the end of it was a line that went, Can I go out to play? Lu Xu gave it a satisfied look. Go. Remember to come back after ten minutes. Little Fury counted on its claws. Ten minutes was not enough to do anything. From Little Fury's distress, plus 199. Suddenly Lu Xu received a random message, detailing a warrant for Lu Xu's arrest, published by the Collection of Gods on the Darkness Kingdom. Its offer of reward, Earth-type sacred item Deep Sea White Sand. The sender of the message was Nye Ting. Chapter 464, Life is But a Show what was coming would eventually come. Lu Xu knew it when he killed Nojoa to Kenabu that the narrow-minded collection of gods would certainly not let him pass so easily. But with Li Xiao by his side, any assassin sent for him should give it a second thought. Honestly speaking, Lu Xu did not believe many people would be willing to accept the task due to the global reputation of the Heavenly Network. In fact, it was more of a warning than an actual threat. Yet Lu Xu's attention was drawn to the deep sea white sand. Now, his only access to the darkness kingdom was via Anthony's thumb drive. But he had better things to do. Besides, even if his disguise was not exposed, the mission of killing Anthony itself was requested by the collection of gods. Now, with Chen Bailey's task still incomplete, how could he accept another mission in Anthony's name with reward recipient put as, the late Lu Xu? It did not make sense at all. Although certainly he could gain some distress points this way, it would not be worth it. 
With his own clones and the mask, Lu Xu would not mind asking his clones to die a couple of times. If one death would get him a bit of deep sea white sand, eventually he could build a house for Lu Xiaoyu with all the sand he had. However, the question was, how to collect the reward from the Darkness Kingdom. Then, Lu Xu's thoughts were interrupted again by Zhang Yutong's call. I'm coming to Luocheng later with my team. Let's meet in the Daoyuan classroom. Puzzled, Lu Xu wondered what it could be. It was past 10 p.m. then and it would take about one and a half hours to reach there from the provincial capital by car. Was Zhong Yutong in such a hurry just to protect himself personally? That was totally unnecessary. One and a half hours later, Zhong Yutong called him again. We've just driven down from the high-speed expressway. You may leave for Luocheng Daoyuan class and wait for us at the gate. Lu Xu waited for a long time inside Luocheng Foreign Language School while chatting with security guards to kill his time. Suddenly, three black business cars stopped outside the gate. Zhang Yutong's face appeared behind the window. Get in. Then, the cars hurtled towards Beimang Mountain at lightning speed, their engines roaring in the darkness. Seated in the rear of the middle car, Lu Xu asked cautiously, Uncle Zhang, where are we going? Actually I don't think anyone within the borders has the guts to blatantly kill a class C, right? You don't have to protect me, really. Besides, I'm feeling a bit restrained. Zhong Yutong threw him a startled look from the front passenger seat. Who said I'm protecting you? Lu Xu was confused. Then what are you bringing me here for? Didn't you see the warrant? Zhang Yutong replied, Heavenly King Ye has sent us here to cooperate with you. Rest assured. We are experienced. It did not help with the clarification of Lu Xu's doubts at all. What on earth was going on? After they had reached Beimang Mountain, Lu Xu saw loads of photography equipment being unloaded from the other two business cars. A young man in a black hood walked over silently. I'm probably gonna stop after this. Zhang Yutong gave a nod of approval. Sure. Heavenly King Ye has informed me that your identity is at risk. Please report to Yuzhou Heavenly Network once you kill Lu Xu and your position will be recovered. Lu Xu's jaws almost dropped. Kill me. Are they kidding? Pulling me over secretly just to kill me? But the thing is, I'm afraid a few Class Cs would not be able to do the job. Then, Zhong Yutong turned to speak to Lu Xu, let me introduce to you. This is Yu Mingyu, a spy from our heavenly network. This time, he is in charge of killing you. After that, he will return to our network. Lu Xu found it hard to believe what he had just heard. Hey, man, is it really appropriate to discuss this with me so emotionlessly? At this moment, Zhong Yutong suddenly patted his forehead. Oh yeah, I forgot that it's your first time in this kind of thing. How should I put it, we are not really taking your life. Instead, we are helping you to fake your death and take that deep sea white sand from the darkness kingdom. But rest assured that the sand is yours, not ours. Besides, Yu Mingyu's current identity is very suitable for doing this. He is a good and careful actor. Lu Xu Thus, in a nutshell, it was an officially sponsored drama show aiming at the reward offered by the Darkness Kingdom. What a fair trade for a big organization like the Heavenly Network. Zhong Yutong seemed to have read his mind. Don't think too much. There's no harm to take free stuff. Besides, the deep sea white sand offered this time is very precious as it is a priceless artifact of Earth-type metahumans. Thus, we shall get the thing first and consider revenge later. Now Lu Xu had finally understood why Li Ixiao had always been sent for overseas matters, because the working style of this organization was not serious at all. However, why do you seem so familiar with these kinds of tricks, Lieutenant Zhang? Also, what did he just say? We shall get the thing first and consider revenge later. Wow, so skillful at taking advantages of a situation. Suddenly, Lu Xu felt resonance with their shameless work culture. Honestly, Lu Xu fully agreed with their logic too. 
When you offer rewards to kill me, surely the right thing to do was to take your rewards and give you a thrashing. Meanwhile, Yu Mingyu had finished securing the camera onto himself. In this context, it would be illogical to set up cameras at the side. Thus, such recording instruments were the most suitable for evidence collection purposes and the other equipment was for taking high-resolution photos after Lu Xu's death. Besides, collecting evidence from Yu Mingyu's first-person perspective would also be more realistic and professional. Certainly very experienced, Yu Mingyu even suggested, I think street fighting is the best. First, the difficulty level is low. Second, it is less possible to make a mistake in narrow views like this. Lu Xu was shocked. Did they hire a professional actor? Then a person walked over and told Lu Xu, Major Lu, after you cooperate with Yu Mingyu to film a scene of you falling into his ambush, please proceed to the first car for makeup. Lu Xu suddenly felt deep reverence for Zhang Yutong and Ye Ting, who had even taken makeup artists into consideration. What the hell? They are truly exploiting whatever means possible simply for the rewards. Chapter 465, Yu Mingyu Walking along a narrow, dimly lit lane alone, Lu Xu turned around the street corner, not noticing the figure lurking in the darkness. It was not due to Lu Xu's lack of alertness, though, but the other person's shadow-related power that almost turned him invisible like a specter in the darkness. All of a sudden, the assassin sprang out of the shade, like a night owl dashing towards its prey. A black dagger gleamed in his right hand. Horrified, Lu Xu turned back, his eyes filled with fear. Divine water quickly welled up from him, but it was too late. Fully prepared, the other person approached fast and steadily. In an instant, the gap between them was closed and Lu Xu screamed in agony. Okay. Great. This scene is done, Zhang Yutong said, you are such an actor, Lu Xu. I'm surprised. Last time it took us the entire night to ensure the footage was up to standard. Lu Xu. When was the last time? How many times on earth have you done this? Then, Lu Xu went to the makeup room. The artist spent one whole hour on him and Lu Xu felt he was going to die of awkwardness. It was the first time in his life putting on cosmetics. One hour later, he walked out with a severely wounded, bleeding abdomen and a pale face. Curious, Lu Xu asked, why does it have to be so detailed? It can't be filmed clearly at night anyway. Zhang Yutong shook his head. Those from the Darkness Kingdom are very picky. We need to achieve perfection in every detail. They were kept busy until almost dawn. During their interaction, Lu Xu had gradually become familiar with Yu Mingyu. It was then that he learned that Yu Mingyu was the last person who was asked to be captured with a reward. Then, after the arrangement by the Heavenly Network to have killed him, he concealed his identity immediately and became an undercover agent. Since then, he had been acting under the role of the top assassin among individual practitioners. A metahuman, Yu Mingyu was recruited by the Heavenly Network at the start of Spirit Chi Regeneration. Afterwards, he worked in Southeast Asia to deal with overseas matters. Gradually, he was appointed the person in charge of SEA after gaining enough trust. Nonetheless, his conflicts with the collection of gods soon landed him in trouble. Now, the Heavenly Network wanted him back in the system, as the job as an undercover agent was definitely difficult and risky. On one hand, the network would show full respect to the agent's own decision. On the other hand, the loss would be immense if the agent chose to betray them due to his dissatisfaction with the current situation. Truth be told, Lu Xu felt slightly uncomfortable in his interactions with Yu Mingyu because of his effeminate way of speaking, and his habit of hiding his face in the shade of his hood even during conversations. But Lu Xu did not pay much attention to it. Maybe it was his way to disguise himself, Lu Xu thought. In his impression, Yu Mingyu was a calm and cold-blooded killer. Contrary to Lu Xu's expectations, Yu Mingyu was actually rather talkative. Lu Xu was puzzled. Would he not leak the secrets accidentally since he liked to talk so much? But one thing was for sure. 
Zhang Yutong was a habitual offender of such activities. Moreover, Yu Mingyu was involved in the Ko Chang remains this time as well. He said he had been watching Lu Xu and Li Xiao in secret from the crowd. Lu Xu was enlightened. Just as expected, the Heavenly Network had indeed sent back up for them, just that none of them showed up. But were you not concerned about Yu Mingyu's safety in Li Yixiao's presence, Heavenly King Ye? In the next scene, Lu Xu fled desperately, but signs of exhaustion were starting to appear. Meanwhile, Yu Mingyu followed behind slowly, as though waiting for the collapse of his prey like a cheetah that aimed to take down his target with the least energy expended. In the end, Lu Xu fell to the floor due to blood loss. Okay. This one is done too, Zhong Yutong walked over and said, we are almost done. Yu Mingyu, teach Lu Xu how to do the next one. Then, he turned to discuss with the post-production committee about how to cut the films. Lu Xu was stunned. Was he really a pro from the Heavenly Network? Or was his real identity a director? Then, Lu Xu spoke to Yu Mingyu with admiration, Brother, your acting skills are wonderful. Just now you did so well in cruelly killing your prey. What a pity that it couldn't be captured in the video. Yu Mingyu took off his hood, revealing his pale yet beautiful face. He smiled shyly. I like to watch movies of this genre. In fact, I think I might have been a bit too dramatic just now and I want to do it again. Ha! <laughs> Such commitment. Then Lu Xu remembered that he might have hurt Yu Mingyu earlier as he struggled. Although Yu Mingyu was also a class C, it might still be painful. Thus, Lu Xu apologized, I'm sorry if I hurt you just now. It's my first time doing this and I don't know how much force to use. Please forgive me. It's okay. Although it hurts, it's quite pleasurable, Yu Mingyu replied with a bashful grin. That gave Lu Xu goosebumps at once. Pleasurable? Are you sure about your choice of word? I've never seen such hobbies outside certain kinds of movies. What happened to your supposed image of a cold-blooded undercover killer? Subconsciously Lu Xu took a small step back. Yu Mingyu immediately explained himself, actually I can't help it, really. Please don't be mistaken. Will you feel disgusted by this? No. Not at all. I respect all interests, Lu Xu replied, in fact. Yu Mingyu's face lit up at the twist. He interrupted, in fact you like it too? Are you an S or M? Lu Xu's face went straight. I'm an XXL. From Yu Mingyu's distress, plus 666. Then Yu Mingyu realized that he had misinterpreted Lu Xu's meaning. But he did not ask for his shirt size either. Suddenly Zhang Yutong shouted over, we need to adjust the equipment to finish up with the last few scenes. You two can come over for a rest. All right. Lu Xu immediately seized the opportunity to leave the conversation, but Yu Mingyu followed too. Then, the crew passed them a thermos flask and two cups. Lu Xu thanked him. Yu Mingyu murmured softly, actually I don't want it either. Oftentimes I'm troubled by it too. But I don't know what to do. Lu Xu thought, why are you talking to me about this, mate? We've only met twice if the one in the remains was considered. Upon second thoughts, he said, take the cup. Unsure what he was up to, Yu Mingyu obeyed nonetheless. Then, Lu Xu poured hot water from the thermos flask into the cup until it spilled over onto Yu Mingyu's fingers. He wanted to tell Yu Mingyu that. Yu Mingyu exclaimed. Ah. Feels so good. Lu Xu. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the hill